back in surface within three years. Uh, you'll have debt topping out under 20, under 30 percent of GDP. Uh, I think we'll have created a better part of 170,000 jobs. Uh, we'll be in a position where the economy is growing and where, where it can afford its liabilities. And in my view, why do you want to put another tax on the economy, which is frankly just a dagger through the heart of growth? I can't see the point in that. Because Secondly, I don't actually accept the view that New Zealand doesn't have a capital gains tax. It does. Um, yes, it's not as comprehensive as some jurisdictions, but actually if one goes and looks at those jurisdictions, you'll see that there are a lot of differences actually. I mean, they are all purist in the way they're delivered, and actually the interaction between the personal and company rates in New Zealand is quite subtle. Um, and actually, if you go and have a look at it, in the last, um, both budget 2011 and budget 2012, a considerable number of changes were made by national. Labor's actually <coughs> fighting a problem they had when they were in office, but not actually the problem that exists today. I think if you go and ask people who have been buying and selling properties or buying and selling shares and selling property anything in under five years, whether they've had a knock on the door from the IRD company. So how do you answer the question about the buying even fifty thousand dollars as a major of salary and get taxed on that? Yeah. That uh, why shouldn't I get taxed on a fifty thousand dollar capital gain on that? Yeah, because it depends on what your intent was, it depends on what asset you particularly bought. But if you bought an investment property, you would have been renting that property and in the business of renting properties for a considerable period of time. If you didn't, you probably breached your intent rules. So look at I think if you go and have a look at overall mix of taxes we have in New Zealand and the integrity of that tax system under national law I can tell you is the system is a lot better, a lot less complex and more likely to, to deliver revenue. Um, yep, in the very long term of course you can always put new taxes on but if the answer to New Zealand is more taxes then New Zealand is better get used to lower growth and lower wage growth and less jobs. Because well, in the end this is just another sea anchor on the economy that's been proposed by Labour because they want to spend more money and then they've got to square the circle and the answer to that is put another tax on New Zealand. Aren't those intentionals only if you sell it within two years? So no, what if that's not right. No. And by the way, if you want to go and ask the person in New Zealand who is probably the most proficient in understanding the tax system in New Zealand, don't ask Robin Oliver, the head of tax um, policy at um, IRD, he's vehemently opposed to capital gains tax. So what if you buy a rental property then? With the intention of renting it out, but you sell it. So you don't you don't have the intention at the start of making a capital gain. You sell it, you make a capital gain. That's income. Correct. But you have to prove to IRD that that was genuinely what your intent was. If you're talking about um, adding taxes to the New Zealand economy, uh, the national government actually did that by increasing GST, didn't it? And well, I appreciate it's for some no. neutral, yeah. but that's exactly what Labour was. No, it's not. Proposing as well to do a fiscally neutral. No, it's not. Labor's not going to be fiscally neutral. Well, it's taking uh, tax free off the first five thousand. Yeah, let's we'll wait and see when we see the numbers next this week. Um, while we're on the subject of tax, I bet you it won't be. While we're on the subject, it'll be out there spending more money and basically putting another tax on. Well, straight in the end, they only know how to do one thing in the skies, and that is tax the economy more and spend more. You wait and see. Australia what? is also looking to increase its. Um, I think it's eighteen thousand. Yeah, it's looking to put a, a, a multi-billion dollar ETS on its economy. So yep, it's, it's giving repayments through a higher tax free, th free, th free threshold and it's taking billions and billions of dollars off people through the ETS. So do you think that's a bad thing potentially for their economy and it could affect people in New Zealand? No, I think it's a matter for them. But my point is, they are raising a hell of a lot of revenue. So, you, you know, I could go around tomorrow and raise a hell of a lot of revenue and then bring in a tax-free threshold. I'm not taking. I'm not taking the pressure off the New Zealand economy. If you want New Zealand to grow and to attract investment, you need a low-tax, fair regime of integrity. We don't need another new tax in New Zealand. We need more taxpayers in New Zealand. And the answer from Labor is this one: If you are a top personal taxpayer, your tax is going up. You'll certainly pay more in capital gains tax. And frankly, you're not welcome in New Zealand. Well, they can campaign on that, and good luck. Prime Minister, my perspective, that's not the way we see things out. Wouldn't that um, leave the opportunity of lowering income taxes and corporate taxes, though, if you wanted to engage in this type of trade-off, which was identical to the one that you did with GST? Well, Could, people, couldn't you embrace it on those grounds? That, but in our view, that's not going to be where they go. No, it's where you could go, though. Well, we don't want to. We, look, we're happy with the tax system in New Zealand. We have aligned the top personal rate with the trust rate. We've aligned the top savings rate with we don't have exemptions to GST. We have um, a great system with good integrity. People are not spending their life with tax accountants. 
I'll tell you now, go and think through all the things these people are talking about. So if, if they are going to have a valuation <coughs> on every new asset, if they're going to include assets you currently own, then somewhere along the line, every New Zealand is going to have, have to value every asset that's included in this. Well, good luck with that one. So the rest that's, of that's the starting point, and it only gets worse. So, so, so the rest of the world somehow, which stumbles along with a, with a capital gains tax, is wrong, and we are right. But the rest Could of the world, all of them have different quirks in the system. Most agree, but they have most one in some form or other. Yeah, and I, they're entitled to have their design. What I'm telling you is, I'm happy with our design. A lot of those countries don't have GST that's comprehensive across the system. A lot of them don't have imputation between personal taxes uh, and between company taxes. A lot of them have very different rules around deductibility of their company expenses. They are all different. But the argument somehow that New Zealand doesn't have a capital gains tax is wrong. What you can do is extend that and put another tax on if you want to. We don't want it. In relation to the gift duty, um, the abolition of gift duty, which is in the Taxation Amendment Bill coming yep. before Parliament, the Institute of Chartered Accountants has warned that that may open up um, widespread tax avoidance and novel forms of tax avoidance which haven't really been thought through. Well, the advice from the officials is that's wrong. And again, if you go back and have a look at gift duty, I think it raised less than about a million dollars. The Institute for Chartered Accountants, who, the Institute for Chartered Accountants don't believe that. So, I mean, isn't it worth well, we, considering? Well, we tested that through all of the officials, for obvious reasons, and the advice we had was that the amount of revenue it raised was tiny, the administration cost of it was very high, and the probability of it being able to be used to uh, gain the system, if you like, wasn't there. Um, and I advise you to take it up with Peter Dunn for that, believe me, but he's got all the advice from the officials. The, the advice from the officials is extremely thin, actually. It's like it's a few pages long, and, and it's hardly, hardly comprehensive. Yeah, well, sometimes one word's enough to give you an answer. There's well, except this, this is a, ta a tax cut, essentially, for the wealthy in terms of, in no, terms of $70 million of, of, of compliance costs. But Trust for people you, we raised a million dollars for $70 million worth of compliance costs. People put it, but that's only wealthy people putting money into trusts, trying to, to basically, I mean, trying to protect assets from creditors and so forth. Well, all of that is tested out, and I ask those There's questions myself, and the so don't take out the What do you think of the rate that Australia struck for its carbon price, and uh, does this make it inevitable that we'll have to end our hard obligation on its fast in the next year? Well, in terms of the latter part of the question, no. We're going through the review at the moment, and we've had an opportunity to look at that review. We can determine what the next steps are for all New Zealand. Um, I haven't actually seen that review, so no, I don't think it does actually mean that we have to halve 